Hello, beloved saints and sons and daughters of the Almighty. Thank you so much for listening today. We're going to talk about, is it okay to pray to the saints? Is it okay to pray to Mary? Um, these are the patriarchs, the um, holy ones, the sacred, the, the, the set-apart ones. Um, I'm going to try to answer that question today. Um, this is something the Catholic Church does, and this is something other churches do. So is this something that we should be doing? Um, <clears throat> well, what does the scripture say? And um, we're commanded to prove all things and hold on to what is good. So let's try to prove all things and hold on to what is good. And um, so the official, the official position of the Roman Catholic Church is that Catholics do not pray to saints in heaven or to Mary. Rather, the Catholics are taught they can... Ask the saints or Mary to pray for them. Okay, so it's a little bit different. They can't pray to them, but they can ask them to pray for them. Okay, so that's uh, that's the official position of the Catholic Church. But despite this official Catholic claims, the words of the Memorare Catholic Prayer is not a request for Mary to pray but an actual prayer to Mary asking her to help for protection. And it is a direct petition to Mary, which breaks the Catholic Church's own rules. It is against Yahweh's commandments as well. And so, remember, it says, Remember, most loving Virgin Mary, never was it heard that anyone who turned to you for help was left unaided. I run to your protection for you are my mother. So this is asking direct for protection from Mary. Mary is acting like the mother and protecting this person. So this goes ex this goes against what their own Catholic prayer goes against their own uh, doctrine. So that's one red flag right there. So let's uh, let's see what else we can find here. Uh, the same <coughs> Catholic prayer says, Hail, Holy Queen, is praying to her directly, which also goes against Catholic Church official stance. And for sure is against Yahweh's law. Uh, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you we cry, the children of Eve. To you we send our sights, sighs mourning and weeping in the land of exile. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy toward us. Lead us home at last. So, their own rule of saying that they don't pray directly to Mary is broken by their own prayer that they have in their own writings. So, that's a big red flag right there. That should tell you something, that their own, their own doctrine contradicts each other. Well, you won't have that in the Bible. The Bible does not contradict itself once in Scripture. Never once. But you'll find in religious churches that their doctrines will contradict each other. And you find this right here in um, the Catholic Church. So this is a red flag. And I just want to say that, that I think all churches are good. We're all on the same team. Okay? There's 40,000 denominations. And... That we all are using the Bible and we all worship the Almighty of the Bible, so we're all on the same team. Okay, uh, so if you're using the Bible as your source and you pr and the Almighty Father is your Almighty, then we're on the same team. Okay, and, and so it's, it's a growing process and we're all learning and we're all growing. So uh, just remember that I'm not against any religion. Um, we're all on the same team, going the same direction. And I'm just trying to prove all things and hold on to what is good. That's all I'm trying to do here. Okay. Um, all right. Also, we are. Um, there is only one mediator or one advocate. So that's, that's what it says here in this prayer. It says, turn in this prayer. It says, turn then most gracious advocate. But then in scripture, it says, we only have one advocate between Yahweh and ourselves 
and that advocate is that man is Yeshua, as we see in 1 Timothy 2 5. So let me read that uh, verse for you. So uh, 2 Timothy 2 5 says, For there is one Almighty and one advocate between the Almighty and men. That man is the Messiah, Yeshua. So there we have it, right there. We only have one advocate between Yahweh and man. And that man is <laughs> the Messiah. So Mary can't be the advocate. She can't be the advocate. Uh, according to scripture, we only have one advocate. So are we going to follow what the Bible says? Or are we going to follow what a tradition of man says? Uh, that, you know, and, you know, the, the churches, they make up these rules and, and they make them doctrine. And then we follow it. But what does the Father say? The Father says, In vain they worship me doing traditions of men. So he doesn't want, Yahweh does not want us doing traditions of men. He wants us to worship him his way and not the way uh, man says. Because then we're actually following man, right? In the very center of the Bible it says, Do not put your trust in man, but put all your trust in the Almighty. We know the Bible is written by man, but inspired by the Almighty for instructions in righteousness. In righteousness, it says in Second uh, Timothy three sixteen. So, um, we need to follow what the Bible says. Now we have to remember it uh, when Moses went up to Mount Sinai. Um, they all started worshiping Yahweh, but they did it their own way. They made a golden calf, and they, they made a graven image, which is strictly forbidden. Even though they were worshiping this golden calf as a representation of Yahweh, they were, doing, they were worshiping Yahweh their own way. And Yah does not want us to worship Him his, our own way. He has specific rules in the scriptures that we need to follow, and when we follow those rules in the scripture to worship him, then we're following his way. And we become a citizen in his kingdom, right? Yah Yahweh did not send his son to bring a member of the church. Yahweh's not, he's not Catholic. He's not, um, Yahweh is not a uh, Presbyterian. He's not a Mormon. He's not a Jehovah's Witness. He is a king. And he wants citizens in his kingdom. <laughs> so um, he wants to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. What That's in the Almighty's prayer. Let your kingdom come on, in, um, on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so he wants to bring his kingdom to earth. So he wants citizens in his kingdom. And so how do you become a citizen in his kingdom? By following the rules of the Bible allows you to be a citizen of his kingdom. You don't want to be a member of a church. Now, don't get me wrong. It is okay to be in a church and f because you're on the same page. You're following the. You're trying to follow the Bible, and you're trying and you're seeking the Almighty. So we're all on the same team. But as we grow in our walk, we we realize that really we want to follow just what the Bible says, and that allows us to be a citizen in His kingdom, and that's what Yahweh really wants. So. Um, being in a church is better than not believe, going to church at all <laughs> and being secular or an atheist or agnostic or being in a false religion, Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim, whatever. That's even worse because that's idolatry. So um, it's a growth thing. It's a growth thing. You start out, uh, some people start out in the world, then they, then they start going to church, which is better, and then you become... Then when you get, you know, enlightened by the Yahweh and he shows you that we just need to follow the rules in the Bible, then you become a citizen in his kingdom. And that's where you want to be. Okay? And so that's the ultimate that's the ultimate plan. You want to be a citizen in his kingdom. Okay? You don't want to be a member of a church, which member of a church is fine, but it's a stepping stone to become a citizen. Okay. Enough of that. Let's let's move on here. Okay. So even though Yeshua is our mediator, we still do not pray to him. Okay, he's our advocate, right? It says in scripture, there's only one advocate. It's not, it's not the saints. It's not 
It's Yeshua, but we still don't pray to Yeshua because he is the son of the Almighty, right? We only pray to the Father. Yeshua shows us how to pray. He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, so we're Yeshua, we, we need to follow what Yeshua tells us to do. And he taught us how to pray. We pray to our Father. Nobody in the Bible ever once pray to Noah. All the apostles, the disciples, Noah was called righteous and blameless. Righteous and nobody is called righteous and blameless. Daniel was called Yahweh's beloved and he was extremely wise. And uh, he, there's no recorded sins of Daniel, but we the, none of the apostles, none of the disciples pray to any of the prophets. They never prayed to Noah. They never prayed to Moses. They never prayed to... So this is a tradition of man created by man, and it's unbiblical. Okay? So we don't pray to saints. We don't pray to Yeshua, Jesus. We don't pray to Him. Okay? Yeshua taught us how to pray. And we are to follow what Yeshua tells us. He's our, he's our king on earth. Yahweh is the king of the universe. Okay, he's king of everything. He's the father and the son is like the prince, right? He's the prince under Yahweh's authority. Okay, so let's let's read this. Even though Yeshua is our, our advocate, we still do not pray. He's our only advocate. We do not pray to him and no one in scripture pray to him. Nobody in scripture prayed to uh, Yeshua. Apostle Paul never prayed to Yeshua, not once, or, an, or an, a patriarch. He never prayed once. You will not find that. Okay, because it's a doctrine of man, a tradition of man. This is like the golden calf. People are worshiping uh, Yahweh their own way, and th we can't do that. We cannot make up our own rules, and that if we're making up our own rules, we're creating a new religion and it's unbiblical and you're not being a citizen of the kingdom, but you're following a religion and you're following man. So do you want to be called a son of man or do you want to be called a son of the Almighty? When you're a citizen of the kingdom and you're following those scriptures and the commandments in the scriptures, you become the son of the Almighty, which is a better calling because if you're a son of man, that's a terrible uh, thing to be called because... That means you're following man as your as your God, and you're meeting you're letting man be your uh, your mighty one. So you don't want to do that, okay? So um, if if the church if the church you're in are following the commandments of the Bible on every occasion, then you're going to be okay. But um, with some churches, you don't see that. And also, we need to keep in mind that um, Yeshua never told us, Yeshua, Jesus, never told us to pray to Him. He didn't say pray. He told us to pray to our Father. So we cannot add to the commandments. We cannot add to them and, and, and make up our own rules and our own commandments. And this is strictly forbidden in the Scriptures. Deuteronomy 4.2 commands us not to add to what I command you and do not subtract from what I command you, but keep the commands of Yahweh, your Elohim, that I give you. So if we're making up our own rules and saying, oh, it's okay, Yahweh's cool with us praying to saints, then this is adding to the Bible. This is making up your own religion. And that's not what Yahweh wants us to do. We can't, we're, we're breaking two commandments here. We're never told to pray to anybody but Yahweh. So that's breaking a commandment if you do that. And two, you're adding to the commandments. You're making up your own rules as you go. Well, we just can't do that. That's not what Yahweh wants. He wants us to, is This is the same thing with the golden calf. We don't worship. You know, 3,000 people died because they were worshiping Yahweh. Uh, with this symbolic golden calf. They made a calf, a, a statue of Yahweh, and they made it a calf. And Yahweh was furious because they were worshiping him their own way, becoming, starting their own religion, 
and um, becoming a son of man and a, in, instead of a citizen in the kingdom and being obedient to what Yahweh commands us. Yah wants us to do exactly what he tells us to do. This is, uh, this is how we love him. It says in scripture, in John 14, 15, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay, not our own commandments, but Yahweh's commandments. That's how we show Yahweh we love him. So if you truly love your Almighty, if you really do love him, then you'll follow what he tells us to do, not what man tells us to do. Here is another witness, okay, I mean, just on that alone, um, you should stop praying to saints or Mary. Just on those two scriptures right there, that we're not to add to the, to, to the scriptures or the commandments or take away. And also, uh, Yeshua told us how to pray. And nobody in the whole Bible ever prayed to a saint. No more. And there's no ins They never prayed to Yeshua, not once. So... This this praying to um, a saint or Mary is a made-up doctrine of a church, a man. It's a man-made doctrine. And we don't want to follow man, we want to follow Yeshua. But here, here is more evidence. I'm not even finished yet. <laughs> There's more evidence here. Uh, Yeshua is the only one alive right now, according to Scripture. Okay, Romans, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Revelation 1 uh, says, And from... Yeshua Messiah, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. Right here, he's the first man that was raised from the dead. There we have it. He's the first man to get his glorified body. He is the first man to get his glorified eternal body. Nobody else has eternal life right now, according to Scripture. Let me give you the verses so you, you'll understand. So, if you're praying... To a saint or Mary, they're not even alive right now. They're sleeping and, and, and they're taking a, what I call a dirt nap. They're going to be woken up and resurrected when the Messiah returns. When he comes at the second coming is when they'll be resurrected and get their glorified bodies. Okay, this is what scripture tells us. Okay, so um, there's three harvests. There's three harvests, three holy, day, three holy days that are spoken of in Leviticus 23. And this is Yahuwah's plan. And it's a harvest of people. It's a picture of a harvest of people as well. And they are tied to Yahweh's three holy days in Leviticus 23. The Passover points to the first harvest in the spring, which is a small harvest of barley. And on the feast uh, of first fruits within that harvest festival of Passover, they, this is on this, the Sunday, they take the first and best harvest of the barley and they do a wave offering to Yahweh. This happens on the first Sunday during Passover. And this represents the first man to get his glorified body, which is Yeshua, the first man to be raised from the dead. He is the first and best harvest of all the people of the whole earth. And so... Um, this whole uh, Passover points to the Messiah. This first, this feast of first fruits, which is the Sunday within the Days of Unleavened Bread, it's it's a picture of Yeshua being the first fruits, the first man to get eternal life. Now, there's a second holy uh, harvest, um, holy holy day, and that's Pentecost or the Feast of Shavuot. And this is a wheat harvest. It's a bigger harvest, and it represents the patriarchs, the saints, the priests, the prophets, the holy men and women of Yahweh who, who lived before the flood, after the flood, and up until this time period, until the Messiah returns, all these holy people. And uh, this would include Mary and all the saints. They're asleep right now. So all of these holy people will be resurrected from the dead on Pentecost when the Messiah returns at the second coming. And so this event has not happened yet. And we see uh, some call this the rapture. Um, and this is what happens when the Messiah returns. And the Messiah has not returned yet. He's not uh, come for the second time. The tribulation needs to happen first. 
So the end times tribulation hasn't started and the Messiah hasn't come for the second coming yet. But when he does return, this is when the saints will be resurrected. This is the second harvest, the wheat harvest. Okay, and the third harvest is the, um, the, the summer harvest, which is the um, biggest harvest. And that's the harvest of all the people who ever lived. And that is a picture of the great white throne judgment. At the great white throne judgment, everybody who has ever lived, um, you know, the saints and everybody that's extremely holy will be resurrected um, at, when the Messiah returns and they'll get their glorified bodies and they'll be the second, that'll be the second resurrection uh, Yeshua being the first man to get eternal life in his glorified body, and then all the saints, and including Mary and everyone that uh, people are praying to right now who are asleep right now, they're not alive, um, will be resurrected. And then the third harvest is the Sukkot, or Feast of Tr Tr Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is the last harvest. It's the summer harvest, and it's the biggest harvest, and it represents everyone who ever lived will be resurrected, and they will go to the great white throne judgment, and they will be judged for their good or their bad deeds, and then Yah will place them in the kingdom where he thinks they should be placed. And so, um, so that is the final harvest, and that hasn't happened yet either. So those three harvests... Uh, tell us, and, and is a picture of future events. So the only one that's alive right now is Yeshua, according to Yahweh's plan and His holy days and His harvest festivals. So this, so this is why it's important to celebrate these feast days. I have a whole video on the feast days and why we should celebrate them, and I encourage you to watch it. Um, it's important to do these holy days because they, they point to these very important events and you understand the Bible and, and, and what it's all about. So, But I'm not even finished yet. Let me give you more scripture to back up what I'm talking about and how the Messiah is the, the only first man um, that's alive right now. Let's just let scripture reveal itself. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so, through Yeshua, uh, the Almighty will bring him those who have fallen asleep. For though this we declare to you by a word from the Master, that he... We who are alive, who are left until the coming of the, of the Master, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Master himself will descend from heaven with a cry, a command, with a voice of an archangel, and with the sound of a trumpet of the Almighty. And the dead in the Messiah will rise first. Then... We who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Master in the air. And so we will always be with the Master. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Well, there you go. So there you have it. Um, when the Messiah returns is when all the saints, this is these apostles talking here. The apostles even knew when the Messiah returns is when they would get there, they would be taken up and get their glorified bodies. They have not received their glorified bodies and all those dead in Messiah, all the patriarchs who ever lived, all the holy people of the scriptures, I'm sure Adam and Eve repented and, and became holy and they're going to get their glorified bodies. Noah, of course, uh, Moses, you know, uh, Abraham, Isaac, all these righteous people, all the prophets, the priests, all the Levites, all these people who dedicated their life to Yahweh, they're going to be resurrected. And so right now they're asleep according to this verse. So what it, the Bible tells us that they're asleep right now. So here it is. Just read it and pray about it. It's 1 Thessalonians 13, 4.13. Read the whole thing. Pray over it. Study it. Let the scripture be your guide and not man, okay? All right, so um, 
It says right here, and the dead in the Messiah will rise first. Okay, so in this second resurrection, all those who are holy, the patriarchs, the saints, will rise at that time when the Messiah comes. He hasn't come back yet, so this has not happened yet. So no, so everyone's asleep right now, according to this verse, right? It's, it says right here, and... Um, Let's see. Da, da, da. Okay. Uh, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep. So they're asleep right now. All the saints are asleep. Okay? So the Bible reveals itself. The Bible reveals itself. Okay. Let's move on. Let's carry on. John 3, 2. Beloved, we are the Almighty's children now, and what we will be as has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. So what they're saying is Yeshua has his glorified eternal body. But they, these apostles are not going to get their glorified body until he reappears the second time at the second coming during the end times tribulation. End times tribulations, which has not happened yet. So you see, this is um, has not happened. So they have not gotten their glorified body. That's first. That's First John three two. Okay, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> first Thessalonians four seventeen. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the master in the air, and so we also will be with the master. So again. This is the um, time when they'll be transformed into their glorified bodies. And that what happens when the Messiah returns at the second coming at the end times tribulation. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15.50 um, I tell you, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yah, nor does the perishable inherit the perishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of the, of the eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed for the perishable body must be put on the imperishable and this mortal body must be made immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality and shall come to pass the this, this saying that is written. So, you see, this is they, they're going to blow the trumpet on, on the Feast of Pentecost. When the Messiah returns, uh, there's a trumpet blowing. So, this is, this is uh, a future event. So, um, this has not happened yet. Okay, so let me just read it again. Behold, I tell you, this, this is verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye in the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. Okay, so he's talking about all the saints who ever lived, all Moses, Daniel, you know, all the holy people will be in this second resurrection uh, and they will get eternal life. And they'll be in their glorified bodies, just like the Messiah. So this is more verses indicating that nobody else is alive except for Messiah, according to Scripture. Right? Let me just read that again, the verse, so that you understand that in in Revelation 1, it says, And from Yeshua Messiah, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. So he's the firstborn. At the next resurrection, at the second coming, is when all the saints will be resurrected. So we want to make sure that we're letting Scripture lead us, and we're not praying to dead people who can't hear our prayers in any way. They can't. And so I'm not finished. I have more points. So just bear with me, please. Okay, so the main point here is that there is no one is alive yet, but only Yeshua, and that the second coming of the Messiah 
which has not happened yet, then the saints and Mary and the prophets and, um, and the priests and the apostles and all the holy, devout men and women of Yahweh will be um, resurrected in the second harvest. And Yeshua returns to earth, then we will, will be um, getting eternal. We'll get our glorified bodies. Okay, so we got to wait for the uh, end times tribulation to happen and the Messiah returns before anybody will be resurrected. So we cannot pray to dead people. And uh, that is strictly ver uh, forbidden to pray to dead people. That is another commandment. So now that we know that they're dead and asleep and they're going to be awoken when the Messiah returns, the Bible commands us in Leviticus 19.31... Uh, let me make sure. Nineteen thirty-one or nineteen thirty-two? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, Leviticus nineteen thirty-one. Sorry. So this is another commandment that we are not al allowed to pray to the dead. So these are three commandments that are being broken by this, right? So, uh, number one is Yah Yeshua tells us how to pray to our Father, and nobody else prayed any differently in the Bible. So, if you're doing differently, then you're breaking the commandment. Number two, you're adding to the Torah, which is uh, against the commandments, um, you know, by making up your own religion, your own rules. Uh, we're not allowed to do that. And number three, we're not allowed to pray to the dead. And these people are definitely dead according to Scripture. They're not alive. They're asleep. And they're not even alive right now. Only Yeshua is alive. So there's three commandments that we're breaking by doing this. Now, uh, let's move on to the next because I'm not finished yet. There's more. Uh, some people say that Moses and Elijah are alive because what happened at the Mountain of Transfiguration. Now, this is a very interesting point, And so... I wanted to cover this so that we understand what's going on here. But that was just a vision, okay? And the main point of this vision is that Moses and Elijah disappeared. And all that was left was Yeshua. So Yahweh is trying to tell us something by this vision, right? L listen to Yeshua as he is greater than these prophets. And he is my son, and a prophet as well. So listen to him over these other two. You know, listen to all of them, but Yeshua is greater than them, right? That's that's the point I, that I got out of it. Is is there's somebody who's greater than them? They're all great, but there's somebody who's greater, and that's Yeshua. He's the, my son, and listen to him. It's important that you listen to him, and so. Luke 9.31, when he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid. They entered the cloud, and a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, who I am chosen, who I have chosen. Listen to him. You see that? Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Yeshua was alone. There you go. He's alone. So it's a vision, and they want... Every, Yahweh wants us to know that we should be listening to Yeshua. He is very profound. Do not, and he is in the same standing as these other two. But he's even greater, right? They're, they're all great, but we listen to Yeshua. So Elijah and Moses can't be alive. And it has, it has to be a vision because Revelation clearly states that Yeshua is the firstborn from the dead. And that's Revelation 1.5. And both Elijah and Moses lived before Moses. I'm sorry. <laughs> For, <laughs> both Elijah and Moses lived before Yeshua. So it was a vision and it was not them. So. Sorry, that was a little typo, but. Elijah and Moses lived before Yeshua. And it says Yeshua is the first one from the dead. So right there alone, we know that only Yeshua was alive and the other two were a vision. Okay? It has to be a vision because Yeshua is the firstborn from the dead. And both Elijah and Moses lived before Yeshua. 
So they're not alive right now. They haven't been resurrected. They'll be resurrected at the second coming of the Messiah at the end time. So they're not alive. So it was a vision and it was not them. Also, the icing on the cake is Luke 16 is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus who died around the same time Lazarus died. And he was trying to communicate to his living brothers, but... Uh, he was not. He was told they could not communicate from where he was, and they the only way would have to bring someone back to life to tell the brothers, and which did not happen yet. So even in the parable of the rich man dying, there was no way to communicate to the dead between the living and the dead. So um, you can't communicate to dead people. It's a it's forbidden to pray to dead people. And um, nobody's alive right now anyways, except for Yeshua, according to the scriptures. Okay, so let me, we have more. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Okay, so, I mean, there's not enough scriptural evidence that men are alive now, um, except for the Messiah. And there's no evidence to pray to Messiah anywhere. Nobody did this in scripture. It was never commanded. So this would be a tradition of man. We need to pray to the Father, the Almighty. And uh, this, if, any, if you're praying to the Messiah or anybody else, this is adding to the commandments, and which is forbidden. So we should not take the risk of sinning and breaking Leviticus 19.31. Praying to the dead is strictly forbidden. And um, we don't want to break commandments. And we don't want to add to the Torah. We don't want to follow rules that don't exist in the Bible. Nobody prayed to an angel or a messiah or a saint anywhere in scripture. So we're, that's creating your own religion and it's strictly forbidden. We don't want to do that. We want to be, uh, we want to follow what the scripture says. And why not just pray to the Father? Go directly to Yahweh. We, we can pray to him and he wants this relationship I mean, why would you want somebody else to... It's kind of like telephone. Do you ever play that telephone game when you're a kid? You, uh, tell, uh, there's, you're sitting in a circle with all the kids in class and you say something to the guy in your left ear, you whisper it, and by the time it gets all the way around, it's not the same thing that you started with. So this is exactly what happens if you're going to be praying to a saint, even though they're not even alive anyway. <laughs> but go directly to the source <laughs> is what you should do. Right? And pray to him directly. This is He wants a relationship with you. How can you have a relationship with your father if you're not even talking to him or praying to him and, and you want to talk to somebody else instead of him? That's, a, that's an insult right there. Just go to the father. What's the difference? Why would you want somebody else in between? Uh, that's, that's not good. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Okay. Let me give me some more... Um, let me give you some more information first uh, that I found here. So, um, Matthew 59. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. This is what this praying to the saints is a human rule. This is strictly forbidden. We are not to do this. This is worshiping in vain. They're tr doing traditions of man. We are not to do this. This is another command we're breaking. We don't want to break commands in the Bible. And praying to the dead is breaking four to five commandments. So this is not good. This is, you know, this is sinning. And we are not to be sinning, right? Okay, also some say that Mary has never sinned. There is no verse that says Mary never sinned. In fact, it says the opposite. It says in Romans 3, 2, 3, all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. Now, I know that Mary was holy and very reverent, and she was chosen and favored by Yahweh because of her righteousness. But she wasn't perfect. Nobody was perfect except for the Messiah. He, 1 Peter 2, 2, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 2, 22 says, He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Nobody else is spoken of in the all of Scripture that had no sin except for Yeshua. So again, we have to let Scripture de direct us to the truth. Prove all things and hold on to what is good. This is another command. We are commanded to prove all things and hold on to what is good. And the Scriptures are true and accurate. And any religions 
that are teaching unscriptural things is not good because they're leading people into sin and that's not what we want to do. We want to be citizens of the kingdom. We don't want to be members of a church. Okay. Also, we are not to pray to angels either. There is not one time in scripture that a patriarch ever prayed to an angel. Uh, this is adding to the commandments again, which is forbidden. Yeshua taught us how to pray. Um, Revelation 22, 8. And I am John who heard and saw these things. And when I heard them and said, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had shown me these things. But he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who kept the words of the book and worshiped Yah. So we're not to worship angels, okay? We're not to do this. And when you're praying to an angel or a saint or Mary, you're, it's a form of worship. We are not to do that. We only worship Yahweh, the Almighty. We give honor and reverence and respect and great love and adoration to Yeshua and Mary and the patriarchs and saints, but they're not alive to receive that right now. Only Yeshua is, and we don't. We speak to the Father if we want to say something to Yeshua. Say, Father, please tell Yeshua that we love that what He did for us, and uh, please bless Him. You know, so we want to make sure that we're praying to Yahweh, uh, and Yahweh can relay the message to Yeshua. But nobody else is alive right now. Okay. Um, yeah, Yeshua taught us how to pray and we need to follow that. Okay, not once has anyone in the Bible prayed to a man, an angel, or an apostle, a disciple, or, uh, you know, this is a tradition of man in a form of idolatry. Now, idolatry is strictly forbidden. So when you're praying to these other people, this is a form of idolatry. And this is how Satan works. He tries to sneak in and slip these little doctrines in the church. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the people that go to church and they, they pray to they pray to Mary and they pray to the saints, they have a sincere heart and they have a good heart and they love Yahweh with all their heart. And these are good people. But they've been misled. And this is how Satan works. He comes in and he changes one little thing. And people don't realize this. And so the reason why I'm making this video is I don't want anyone to fall into sin. And this is a sin. And I want people to realize that it's not about religion. Now, religions are good. But being a citizen of the kingdom of heaven and following the commandments of the Bible makes you a citizen. And that is better. And that's where we want to be. And so, um, I'm not saying get rid of all your... I'm saying is strive for righteousness and follow the commandments. And, and this will lead you to a path uh, that Yahweh wants you to go down. Okay. Uh, let no one disqualify... This is Colossians 2.18. Let no one disqualify you insisting on... Um, Ascenticism, which is avoidance of all forms of indulgence or worship of angels, going in on in detail about visions puffed up with reason by his sensuous mind. You see, worship of angels. We don't want to do that. That's forbidden. Okay, Isaiah 8, 19. And when they say to you, inquire of the mediums, the necromancers, necromancers are those that pray to the dead or communicate to the dead, which is the same thing. Uh, let me let me start over. Isaiah eight nineteen, and when they say to you, inquire of the mediums or the necromancers who chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their Almighty? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? So even Isaiah saw that this was ridiculous, and he didn't want people doing it. Um, we are shown to pray to Yahweh all throughout Scripture. And I'll just give you some verses. Psalms 55, 1. Give ear to my prayer, O Elohim, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. See, we're praying to Yahweh here. Uh, Proverbs. Yeah, uh, Proverbs 15, 29. Yahuwah is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. And so let's be righteous, you all, and let's follow the commandments and not traditions of man. 
Um, and I'm not judging anyone that's prayed. I'm not saying, I'm saying let's try to, let's, let's change. Let's become better. Let's become better Christians, right? I'm not judging anyone who did things because, you know, we've all made mistakes in the past. But if we, we realize the mistakes and we fix them, that's when you become a genius. Okay, Hebrews 4.16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we can find grace and mercy if we draw near to the throne of grace, to Yahweh, right? Draw near to Yahweh in His throne. You can go to His throne and pray to Him directly. Um, so just pray to Yahweh. It's gonna, it's, it's, it's going to, uh, it's going right to the source, and He's the decision maker. And make a, have a relationship with Yahweh. Be close to Him. He's the one that loves you and wants to bless you. Nobody else can help you do that. He's the one. So. Um, no one ever prayed to Moses or Samuel or any of the prophets anywhere in Scripture. Uh, all these people were very righteous. Daniel, the prophets, so none of the apostles. And so uh, this, the apostles never did this. They never prayed to angels. And these are our examples. Okay, We are to follow these people, not the church, but the people in Scripture. The Bible, it was put, to help, put together by Yahweh for a reason. And this is our guide, our instruction manual. And we need to use that above anything else, any doctrines of a church. Okay, so based on the overwhelming evidence <laughs> that this praying to the dead saints was never done in the past and that Yeshua is the only man alive and this is forbidden to pray to the dead in Leviticus 19.23, also in Isaiah, um, I have to agree with the Bible and not every prayer, praying to the dead saint or angel who is not even alive was never done in Scripture. And so this would be adding to the Bible, which is also forbidden and against the law of the Bible. And so let's be wise. Let's not pray to saints. How easy is it not to pray to saints and just pray directly to Yahweh? It's so easy. Why put a middleman in the way? That's like, you know, when you do business, if you can go right to the wholesaler and get the product for uh, $10 cheaper, why would you go through a middleman and pay another extra $10 and uh, have a chance of getting miscommunication and messing everything up? Why do that? Because that's Satan. Satan loves to come in and kill, steal, destroy, distract, and confuse people and cause them to sin. He wants you to sin. And this is, what, this is what's happening here. I'm not blaming the church. I'm not blaming anybody in, in charge. I'm, I'm blaming Satan. Satan is the one behind this. And we need, to, we need to get this out there. We need to let the Catholic Church know that we can't be doing this anymore. Okay, um, I'm sure that most of these people are good people. And they're saints in training, just like everybody else. We're all training to be saints here. But let's, let's prove all things and hold on to what is good. And let's correct the people in charge. Let's really hold them accountable. This is important. Go to your leaders and say, hey, look at this evidence here. Show them this video. Say, listen, this needs to be changed. We can't do this. We are sinning by doing this. Let's change this doctrine. And let's make ourselves better, okay? So it's our job to tell others and not just, if you, there's an old saying, there's an old saying, if you are not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So we have a responsibility to tell the leaders of our congregation that we can't do this. And we can't just sit by and just keep it for ourselves. So we need to let them know. And it's our job to do that, okay? So, this, so, um, you know, not praying to your, to the Almighty is a very big sin. He created you because he wants a relationship with you. He's your real father. This avoiding him is, a vi this is a very big blessing you get to have. You get to have a relationship with the Almighty. He's the one who decides where you're going to be placed in the kingdom. So I would suggest you start talking with him directly and getting to know him and not ignore him and follow the tradition. Don't talk, follow traditions of man, which is also breaking the commandments. Um, in Matthew 15, 9 says, They worship me in vain, doing traditions of men, human rules. We, this is, 
we're, we don't want to follow the church. We want to follow Yahweh. So, um, okay, well, I just wanted to thank you so much uh, for listening. And, and um, please like and subscribe. And please share this video with your pastor, your preacher. If, they're, if they are praying to saints and, and other, uh, or, or, or the, you know, Virgin Mary... Let them see this and and decide for themselves. And let let's share this. Please share this with other people that are in the Catholic Church or other churches that are doing this. We need to, you know, uh, prove all things and hold on to what is good. And we need to share that with others. And um, I also have a video on what day is the Sabbath? Is it Saturday or Sunday? And I really recommend that you watch that as well. And I have other videos um, that I've made. Um, that I I hope that inspire you to be more holy and to become more devout and to become the saint that we're called to be so we can part, be part of Yahweh's royal family. Um, you know, this life, the average person only lives 78 years and whatever we do within this life will determine our eternal life. So if you can change and turn people from sin, that covers a multitude of your sins. So if you can stop people from praying to saints, which is a big sin, it's a, it's a form of idolatry, which Yahweh hates. It's, it's, one of the, it's the first commandments of the Ten Commandments. Do not, you know, commit idolatry. Don't have any other gods before me. And really, praying to a saint is kind of like having another god. And this is how Satan comes in to steal, kill, and destroy your eternal life. He, he loves to just change. He's very sneaky and subtle and, and, and he's just mean. He's just mean. And, and all these righteous people are sinning and they don't know it. And, then, and I just feel so bad. And they're such pure and righteous people. They're so holy. And they really love Yahweh so much. And I just, I'm, that's why I'm making this video is to help bring those people back to Yahweh and the, the commandments and to walk away from this this thing that satan has done he's 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 just like what he did to adam and eve they were pure and innocent and adam and satan came in and made them sin he convinced them oh you shall not surely die he changed one word yahweh said you shall surely die and all satan does is change you shall not surely die and uh you will be like yahweh he's since you know in trying you know so you know satan his favorite thing to do is to steal somebody's um steal somebody's life their eternal life don't let them do it don't don't let them take your crown you don't let you you are called chosen and anointed to be a saint and part of Yah's royal family so please share this with others uh, this is our job to share this with others I, so i encourage you and um thank you so much for listening and i pray that this resonates with you and that, that you really see and you pray about these verses and that you, we start praying to Yahweh directly and we just skip all the, the extra stuff, the traditions of men. Thank you so much. May Yah bless you in all that you do.